So I have three seed nursery systems right here. So how many oysters are we talking about? Right now, 50 million. A vast abundance of oysters feeding and growing in these nutrient-rich waters. Bain Sound is the premier place for growing oysters. As they feed, though, shellfish here and around the world are also ingesting tiny pieces of plastic. Most too small to see with the naked eye. It certainly has become a topic of discussion and research. And so it's something that as an industry we need to know. Are there microplastics in our oysters? If there are, what levels would be safe? This university lab is trying to answer that question. We're finding the fibers in almost every shellfish. So here we've got some labeled oysters. Plucked from carefully chosen beaches, shellfish are taken to this lab. Then they're chemically broken down to reveal the microplastics left behind. So when you take an oyster and digest it down and filter it, this is what you have left. So this is essentially the guts of an oyster on a filter paper. Researchers are finding plastics inside and even wrapped around the plankton at the base of the food chain. We don't know what the risk is of microplastics from an ecosystem level or from a human consumption level. We don't know a lot about how microplastics might affect food safety or food security. We have our, our work cut out for us. It's staggering just how much plastic is being added to the world's oceans. One estimate puts it at a garbage truck full every minute of the day. Car tires spin off plastic particles as they wear. Another source? Clothing. The washing machine, while it's cleaning your garments, it's also slowly breaking them down. Concern about plastic fibers from clothing is becoming a big issue for the textile industry. Canada's Mountain Equipment Co-op just announced it's donating $50,000 to research how their products release microplastics and what can be done about it. It's the first time the co-op's ever directly funded scientific research. We can work upstream with manufacturers as we've done sort of at different periods in, in our history to change the way things are made, uh, either the materials going into them or the construction manufacturing methods to once again try to reduce that footprint of the product. For now, household wastewater and its microplastics ends up in places like this. Put that through a filter and then uh see what kind of microplastics we have in there. At this BC wastewater treatment plant, researchers are looking at how much plastic is coming in with the sewage and how much is escaping. It's a very troubling time from a global conservation perspective because we're encountering a pollutant that's unlike any other pollutant we've really seen before. This is not a chemical pollutant, it's a structural pollutant. They stick to everything. Back at his lab, Ross's team uses sophisticated equipment to separate the plastics into different types and trace them back to their source. Researchers say by 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than living creatures. Recent samples off the coast of BC are showing up to 25,000 tiny pieces in just one cubic meter of water, stoking worries about the impact on the food supply. It's something that you must, we might as well start and deal with now because it's a long-term process. Adding urgency to the task of deciphering the impact of so much plastic on the world's oceans. Greg Rasmussen, CBC News, Deep Bay, British Columbia.